Hello there, my fellow clan scientists, and welcome back to some Battletech lore. Today we're gonna get started on a brand new mini-series focused on the different designs of battle armor. Now, there are quite a lot of types of battle armor in the universe, so after thinking for a bit, I hopefully came up with a satisfactory method of splitting them up. To begin with, we're gonna cover just the clan designs and split them according to weight light, medium and heavy. And when we're done with that, we're gonna proceed with some designs of the inner sphere. Thus, today we're gonna start with the lightest of clan battle armor, in this case the Sylph, the Eerie and the Constable. Now of course these are not the only light battle armor designs of the clans, but I figured they're a good starting point. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first of today's designs is the Sylph. This thing has a cost of 475,000 sea bills and a mass of 750 kilograms, or for the Americans out there, 1653 pounds. The Sylph was made by Clan Cloud Cobra in order to augment their vast aerospace forces with a fully airborne battle armor suit. Naming it after elemental spirits representing air, Development of this suit was driven just as much by Clan Cloud Cobra's faith as it was by the Khan of the time. Despite their scientists cast vast knowledge of aircraft, the clan had a great deal of problems getting the VTOL capabilities of this thing to function, with several test pilots actually dying during the development. As it is, the Sylph only possesses limited flight capability, but even so this is a remarkable accomplishment. First deployed in 3060, the Sylph had become a staple of the Cloud Cobra army. The training required to pilot a Sylph is far more intensive than other suits, but those who succeed in it are given a lot of respect as a result. Another byproduct of the Sylph is that the Cobras obviously invested heavily in the design before it was even completed. Having already graduated mixed elemental and fighter pilot bloodlines specifically to operate this suit. Outside of the Cloud Cobras, other clans have also adapted this, but more cautiously. Both the clans Snow Raven and Diamond Shark obtained a few of them via Trials of Possession, although they've since limited their use to test deployments, while the clan Star Adder began deploying the suit with their Alpha and Beta galaxies. The weapons on the Sylph are more limited than your average battle armor with a fixed micro-pulse laser in the right arm and a battle claw in the left. Backing up the laser is a relatively primitive one-shot cluster bomb rack attached to the suit's jump pack. The centerpiece of this design is the advanced propulsion system, adapted from the jump jets which are standard on other battle suits, and this can maintain a steady airspeed of 53 km an hour. In addition to the normal controls found in other suits, the Sylph has a complex system of pedals and leg harnesses when in flight. The ability to hover is regulated by computer control, which diverts thrust from the main jets through dozens of directional exhaust ports, which also gives the suit its incredible agility. The price for this, however, is that the Sylph mounts only half as much armor as your basic elemental suit, and only a lightweight weapon package. The Sylph XR was an experimental variant created by Clan Snow Raven in 3077 during the Jihad. This variant trades the flight capability of the original for a lot of increase in land speed. A battle armor mimer booster system in place of the flight pack allows it to reach speeds of up to 58 km an hour, faster than many other battlesuits while the bomb rack and the laser were exchanged for arm-mounted light machine guns and a body-mounted searchlight. The result of these changes was an excellent anti-infantry and counterinsurgency unit, able to outrun any kind of infantry and inflict a lot of damage upon them. Several points of these suits were first put in use in the trial runs on Remora to flush out Blake's terror groups. While it was successful, a common complaint was a lack of heavy weapons for fighting tougher opponents, and a lot of user discomfort because of the insufficient thermal insulation around the booster. Some Sylph XR pilots were even killed when they opened their visors for a breath of fresh air, only to be targeted by eagle-eyed snipers. 
The so-called enhanced sylph is the production variant of the earlier mentioned experimental variant, also introduced by Clan Snow Raven. While it does retain the Battle Armor Mimer booster, the light machine guns and the searchlight are gone, replaced by one ER micro laser in the right arm, an anti-personnel weapon mount in the left arm, and the use of basic manipulators to allow the enhanced sylph to perform anti-mech attacks and ride on Omnimechs. Even with extra cooling systems installed to address the earlier problems, it still remains the least comfortable battlesuit to pilot, and requires extra physical conditioning to withstand the heat. The first major engagement of this particular design was against a band of pirates led by former Clan Smoke Jaguar warriors. They were able to outmaneuver the slower elementals of the pirates and force them to withdraw, leaving their mechs exposed. Although 20% of the enhanced sill force was lost, the Snow Ravens believed that this would have been much greater had they used slower units. The second of today's designs is the Eerie. This one comes at a bit cheaper price of 329,000 sea bills, a lighter mass of only 400 kilograms, or for the Americans out there, 880 pounds. Although Clan Snow Raven had developed many Zero-G and Space variants of battle armor ever since employing them in the Golden Century, none of them had been built expressly for spaceborne operation, either in free flight or aboard bigger vessels. So in the 3060s, as the clan began to expand out its homeworld holdings into the deep periphery, they gained access to new resources and areas of expertise from leading scientists in the Outworld Alliance which, in turn, aided them to the development of entirely new battlesuits. Although the scientists of the Ravens have pursued many avenues of investigation, only the lightweight Eerie had entered widespread use. Built with clan technology and drawing on marine combat experience by both the Snow Ravens and their Alliance counterparts, the suit only masses 400 kilograms and is very quick and agile. Its 35 kilograms of advanced armor composite provides some protection against the hazards of space and small arms fire, although the protection is minimal compared to that available on other battlesuits. The exoskeleton boosts the wearer's strength, enhancing their load shifting ability and melee combat capability, but the lightweight design does not hamper freedom of movement. As such, it is ideal for close quarters fighting aboard a spacecraft. It has no integrated weapons, but its armored gloves allow the user to wield standard weapons like a regular soldier. Raven armored infantry equipped with the Eerie generally wield laser systems, avoiding the recoil which might otherwise plague Null G operation. But troopers also enjoy ballistic and missile weapons when required. Initially, the Eeries were only deployed with the Raven's Alpha Galaxy. Initially, reports that the suit was in service with the Outworld Alliance were false, but as of 3075, nearly all dedicated Alliance military vessels have their marines equipped with some Eeries. The move is more precautionary in nature, since the Alliance has seen very little pirate activity, and the word of Blake attacks have been through suicide moves and not traditional boarding action. The most common use of the Eerie now by the Ravens is as a high-grade salvage unit. By removing the extended life support adaptation and installing a dedicated salvage arm in the right forearm, the Eerie has become a powerful tool for the Raven technicians to utilize in repair operations. The third and final design of today is the Constable. Now, I don't know the price of this one, but it does mass 750 kilograms or 1650 pounds. Introduced by the clan Ghost Bear, the officially titled Constable Pacification Suit was designed to help the Ghost Bears maintain order among its inner sphere born citizenry. The Ghost Bear Watch originally developed it to help them against a Russell Hagen terrorist group known as the Modstand. Its array of weapons and equipment options allows the Watch to handle the terrorists while not exposing the civilian population to harm with a fully militarized attack force. Ever since, the suit has been spread to other clans and for the Draconis combined paramilitary organizations such as the Internal Security Force and the Civilian Guidance Corps. 
The design of the constable was based on the so-called Rogue Bear battle armor, where the bear's appeal of mobility was paramount for this suit's role. It is therefore very mobile, able to move by ground as it is able to jump. Its armor protection is similar to a typical military-grade suit of light battle armor. The weapons and equipment include a pair of heavy grenade launchers, giving the operator the flexibility of being able to use an array of ammunition types, both lethal and non-lethal. A pair of cutting torches round out the suit's permanent mounted equipment, giving it the ability to open things that require a more delicate touch. The suit also includes a body-mounted modular weapon mount that fits up to 75 kilograms of extra equipment. These can include an ECM suite, a light machine gun, a single tube SRM launcher, improved sensors, or light tag. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these lightweight but still impressive and useful battle armor designs for today. Next time, we're gonna be moving into medium weight territory with several designs weighing a full ton. In case you're curious, I'm also gonna cover the actual elemental suit as well, but that one, probably since it is the most lore-rich, I might actually do a full video just on it. Anyway, what are your thoughts on today's designs? Were you familiar with any of these battle armors? They definitely don't have a lot of DACA, but they are still useful for what they are. If you enjoyed the episode, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks for watching and have an awesome and healthy day.